Paul Nuttall, its leader, joins me now. Let's start off, Paul Nuttall, talking about uh, banning the burqa. Why are you going to do this? Uh, for two reasons. Uh, firstly, obviously we have a heightened security risk at the moment, and uh, for CCTV to be effective, you need to see people's faces, because whether we like it or not, in this country, uh, there's more CCTV per head than anywhere else on the planet, but the most watched people, and for that to be effective, you need to see people's faces. Secondly, there's the issue of integration. I don't believe that you can integrate fully and enjoy the fruits of British society if you can't see people's faces. faces. And, and, you know, look at some of the statistics. 58% of Muslim women are economically inactive. 22% don't speak English to any great level. What we need to do is we need to ensure that these people are fully integrated into British society, and you can't do that if you're hidden behind a veil. How does this actually work? Because presumably you don't ban dress codes inside people's houses. So it's yes. If they step onto the street, what happens then? They'd be arrested? Uh, no, no, what happens in France, for example, is there's a fine. And what we're doing is we'll come in line with other European countries, such as Belgium, Bulgaria. Uh, there's a ban, for example, in the city of Barcelona, some places in Italy. And indeed, Angela Merkel's talking about this in Germany at the moment. And interestingly, uh, Manfred Weber, who's the leader of the biggest group in the European Parliament, is now talking about an EU-wide ban. We can either be on the curve with this or behind the curve. I'd rather... You could be a good Europhile as usual. <laughs> now, what's changed, however, since 2013? when you said, this is Paul Nuttall, we, what we wouldn't do is go down the line of yeah. enforcing a blanket ban. We are a libertarian party. What has changed since 2013? Well, firstly, uh, I think uh, there's obviously the biggest security threat that we face now, but indeed, you look at uh, Trevor Phillips's report last year well, into Muslims into the UK, you look at the work that Dame Casey has done on this issue, integration is sorry. actually getting worse in Britain at the moment, not but better. But the security this threat was there in 2013, integration was no better in 2013, oh, no, no, we no, we and no, you were in favour, no. and you said you're a li we're a libertarian party, we don't interfere with what people wear and what they eat and so forth. Yeah. We, we know more about integration problems now as a result of Dame Casey's report and look you know I can't walk into a bank with a balaclava on or a crash helmet you know if, if, if I can't do it and, and other people can't do it I don't see why we have a special uh, special interest and you're, you're also going for Sharia law and Sharia yes. courts again why uh, because I don't believe that we should have a parallel legal system in this country. Are you country. doing the same thing uh, for Jewish courts? Uh, well, Betting is slightly different. We've had Betting courts ah. in this country, which date By all the way back... They're, they're which, 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 hang on, no, no, hang on. They mm. go all the way back to the days of Cromwell. The Jewish population uh, in Britain, uh, Orthodox Jewish population, is falling. It's about a quarter of a million now. Uh, the issue surrounding Sharia is that the Muslim population is doubling a decade on decade. It's three million now. It'll be six million soon. And, you know... Where, Trevor, Phillip, Trevor Phillips' report showed that a quarter of Muslim people in Britain want to see Sharia replace British law in areas which are predominantly Muslim populated. You know, we've got a problem with this, but, and either we deal with it now or we'll deal with it down the line. You're going to allow mosques to stay open? Of course mosques can stay open. This is an attack okay. specifically well, on Muslims. It's all about a lot, a, lot, a lot of people but, watching, a lot of people watching will say, UKIP is losing its purpose because we are coming out, out no, of the EU and you're pivoting to become no, an anti-Muslim party. It cannot be right that we have courts or councils in this country where the word of a woman is only worth half that of a man. That, that has no place in a liberal, democratic, functioning Western democracy. Um, and you don't fear that by actually targeting what people wear, you are infringing upon something which is kind of intimate and personal? No, I don't. As I say, you know, if, if CCTV is to be effective in an age of heightened terror, you need to see people's faces. And I want to see because real for integration. For a lot of people, this is I part of who see... they are. Just no. as much as your, I mean, Kevin Guy was joking about your flat cap, but, you know, <laughs> that is part of who you are. This is part yeah. of who these women are. But you can see my face. You know, I'm not a security threat. And beyond that, as I say, it. it's yeah. about integration. Yeah. And, you know, I said earlier, 58% of Muslim women in this country are economically inactive. If you're not showing your face it precludes you from a lot of jobs all right let's move on to another thing that you've announced this morning which is you're suggesting that UKIP will not stand against strongly pro-Brexit Tory candidates uh, marginal no, seats. No, I didn't just say uh, Tory candidates. There could be people like Kate Howey as well. Right. And, and, and pro-Brexit pro MPs. This, this will not yeah. be an order which is com, com, coming down from the top of the party. I will speak to branches over the coming weeks and we will make decisions. What I don't mm. want to see happen is good Brexiteers, not fly by night or five to midnight Brexiteers, so, people who've campaigned for years for Brexit. I don't want to see them lose their seats and remain Okay. Be there in their place. So let's take somebody like Craig McKinley, who was who was uh, an office holder in your party before he became the Tory 
uh, MP for um, Thanet South. Yes. Um, one of your car target seats in UKIP, one of the few seats where you could actually win that seat. Are you saying to UKIP and Thanet South, no. Craig McKinley is a good Brexiteer, therefore let's not stand against him? Uh, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. What, what I, I think the Craig McKinley case is, is a bit different than most, to be perfectly honest with you, because of the, the, the way he was elected and the issue surrounding Nigel Farage and everything mm. else. Uh, but, you know, there, is people, there are people in, for example, Berry, like David Nuttall, who's sitting on a majority of 250, who's been a good Brexiteer all his life. I mean, these are conversations... No, no, I didn't okay, say let, we won't stand against him. The, converse, the conversations that I will have with branches... But what I won't do is make the mistake that we made in 2010, where the party leader told branches... To to stand down. Okay. This will be done. It, okay. with, with quick, quick game. Stand against them or don't stand. <laughs> Theresa May, stand or don't stand. Not my decision. Down to the branch. Boris Johnson, stand or don't stand. Not my decision. Down to the this branch. This is a really boring game. It is. It's going to get very Nuttall, boring. Paul Nuttall, <laughs> are you going to stand? And if so, where? You're going to uh, go back to Stoke. Uh, no, I will make a decision in the coming week as to where to stand. Obviously, I'll be having conversations with branches. But you are going to stand as a candidate for UKIP in this election? Uh, again, I'll have conversations with branches. As I say, everything is... Nothing's decided. Conversations, conversations. Anyway. <laughs>